today's episode has been brought to you by Animal Dick. Anything about that like normal to you? Muy grande, mucho, something other, something. Hola, como esta? Welcome back to Spitball Media. I is the Nick, he is the Jeremiah. Uh -huh. So, Jeremiah, I was writing a poem today, okay? And I realized to myself, I could probably be better off doing a story. So, you know, yeah. And you know how that relates to this movie? Absolutely no way! Are you done? It's your turn now. Alrighty, so we watched uh, Central Intelligence, Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. Uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, let me tell you about the movie first. It starts <laughs> out in high school with Dwayne Johnson's face digitally imposed on a <laughs> fat kid and just really creepy. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Hart plays like the uh, the star athlete. I wasn't sold on that at all. He's a tiny little dude. Uh, and he's like the, the star of the school. And then it comes back to 20 years later. He, he got mentioned. Yeah, fat kid got picked on. So kind of fat kid got picked on. Uh, he was showering in the <coughs> in, in the locker room, and they dragged him out, and threw him on his naked butt mm -hmm. in front of everybody. 20 years later, Kevin Hart realized he's peaked in high school, an accountant. Uh, they get their school reunion coming up. Uh, Dwayne Johnson's character, Bob Stone, mm -hmm. uh, uh, contacts him. Nobody's ever heard from the kids since, you know, the incident. And they agree to meet up at a bar. And of course, it's Dwayne Rock Johnson, and he, he's buff. And it turns out he's a rogue spy, and he's got some codes. He's got. Mm -hmm get and turn over and mm -hmm. uh, that part is really not necessary um as far as the movie itself it dragged <clears> on <throat> a lot in the first half yeah it didn't pick up to the it's middle like it's the middle ending area M most of the jokes mm -hmm. just fell flat because it would telegraph the joke so right. you'd see it coming so it wouldn't be funny when it gets there mm -hmm. very predictable movie uh i think you missed one I think I, I thought his Kevin Hart's wife was going to be the bad guy, yeah. but it ended up being a different. But that was but that was just so random; it didn't even make sense e either. All right. So the premise is now, the Rock Johnson always idolized Kevin Hart in high school. So when he meets him again, it gives this weird stalker fetishes. Yeah, it, that's all he talked about was how he was great in high school, how he was this and that, this and that. And it was so, it was so heavy handed, it got creepy after a while, like. Golden Jet, dude! Stop, stop. I can't believe I'm having a sleepover at Calvin Joyner's house right now. <laughs> this is blowing my mind! And don't look away. Stand to my soul. You are not the Shh, there's no talking. Babe, I'm not standing. I'm swaddling you. I know what you're doing. I'm swaddling I know what you're Come here. Oh, God! Great. Nah, no, yes. you look great. Stop it. No, you haven't changed since high school, oh, dude. Yeah. No, you're just sexy as dick right now. You don't look somebody in the eyes and say that. Very creepy. Oh, like, man, you shouldn't be knowing all this stuff about this man and remembering it's like 20 years later. Yeah. Well, Kevin Hart's stand-up uh, career is hilarious. I yeah. love his stand-up. Kevin Hart's movies, no. He's not even funny in his own he, movie. He tries to be that short guy that's loud and funny. It's just that his whole premise. When you speak to him, whenever you speak to a man and he starts talking about his relationship without you asking anything about it, that's a battered man. As <laughs> soon as you meet him, hey, how you doing? My wife and I go camping every week. What? <laughs> she likes Cheerios too. What are you doing? 
short, loud, and funny. And yes. It works in stand-up, but it don't work in a movie no. sense. <laughs> uh, the Rock's acting when he's tra- when he's playing dork. I mean, it didn't really work too well. No, it's really forced. The Rock is <clears throat> somebody that that plays a badass. Yeah. Like Fast and the Furious, or as the, as that one movie, uh, Shobbs and Hall. I don't think you saw it yet. Not yet. No. It, that's that's his kind of role. But as yeah, a comedy and, duo, I mean, I don't know. It and, don't work. And that role, he could be hilarious in those roles, like the, the uh, one movie, uh, The Other Guys. Mm-hmm. You know, Samuel Jackson was hilarious in that movie. And they were just playing like characters of themselves, basically. All right. Um, Heck, The Expendables had more comedy that was funnier than this. The action scenes in it was good. I liked, liked those. Yes, it was pretty pretty rough, gory and stuff. And oh, the parts. parts. Um, the ending. Okay, so the whole concept is to get to how the ending ends. The Rock is Dwayne a rogue. Rock seat, huh? Dwayne Rock Johnson. Dwayne Rock Johnson. The point is, he was a he's a rogue set A. He got with Kevin because he knew who Kevin was. He's an accountant, so he needs Kevin to do some bidding stuff for him in a foreign account to get this. I don't know, was it a virus code or something? Like it was like a oh, hacking code to get money. It was like. No. Uh, the America's security code. Yeah, so the pl- so that's kind of unforgettable. That's unforgettable there. Yeah, it's not important. Yeah, that's not that's forgettable and everything. So it's not really point. So it goes on where Kevin doesn't want to be there, but he keep the Rock keeps dragging him on, and the Rock is like weird the whole time. Yep. But they think you're right. I am. I'm freaking out. No, I get I'm it. I'm not in. I'm saying they think you're in. I'm not in. I get it. I am not in. I'm not in. I'm out. One sec, Jet. Just gotta disable the GPS. He's like, you gotta be with me, man. You're the best man ever. You're this and that, this and that. It's like, ah, it's just creepy. So finally, Kevin ends up joining him because he thinks the CIA is actually the bad guys. And then they end up meeting the real bad guys, and it all comes down that Dwayne Rock had a partner that faked his death. Now he claims he's the bad guy, and he ends up trying to get the codes. Because Dwayne, <laughs> because he talked so much about how also Kevin Hart was, it drove his partner insane oh, I can see that to happening. kill himself. The dealing with Bob day after day was the hard part. Hey, Phil, what's Bob? I'll see you on the other side. No, no. I, I hope we don't. I hope we don't. All right, just no. Just fight, fight, fight. Just, just. Go. I made up the black badger, rigged up a blood bag, and that big dummy bought it. Bob, no, no. I got it, buddy. No, there's some sort of bomb in here. You're pushing it closed, I think. No, no, no. Sorry. No, don't give up. Yeah. Bye, Bob. That was the whole setup oh, <laughs> to the ending. Fake killed himself. He yeah, fake killed him. himself. He just pretended like he blew up in the oh. elevator and then disappeared. If you're that, I don't want to say creepy with your with your fans. It's or, annoying. You're that annoying to where you, all you talk about is somebody that you knew 20 years ago and you won't shut up about them to to the point where you have to, where your partner kill tr- fakes kills himself. There's something wrong there. All right. What? <laughs> Alright, the three talking points of a movie, TV show, story, play, anything that I would normally talk about. Mm-hmm. One would be the cinematography, uh, the actors, cast, and the plot. None of those apply to a movie like this. No. Uh, the cinematography good. is, the action scenes is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like when he, they bust through the window and landed on the giant gorilla inflatable gorilla mm-hmm. uh it was shot okay shot well for the most part i thought a lot of the fight scenes were junk cut a lot uh, i don't, yeah, I don't were, like flashy uh combat scenes uh messing with you a little bit because you're like it didn't distract me mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times those would just really distract me and take me out of the out of the instant this wasn't too excessive to the point where I, i've lost interest or distracted or anything like that okay Acting, Evan Hart's not an actor. He's a standard comedian. He was okay in Hobbs and Shaw. He had like a small role and it was kind of funny. Uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson, if you watch the very first movie, he was terrible. And 
Apparently, he took the money he made from that movie and went to acting school because he, he played in Walking Tall. He did a great job in that one. Uh, What's that seen these movies? Uh, there, there's been a few other movies he, he's been in. Really good in acting wise. Uh, as far as story and plot, it's everything was just an excuse to put Dwayne. That's all it was. This whole movie an was an excuse, excuse to get to, those two to, on the same yeah, screen. One big, tall, muscular guy. One skinny, short man. That's all it was all about. Is getting two unlikely people and shoving them together. This story didn't really go anywhere. Um, it was a very particular story. That's all it was. Yeah, it was uh, they telegraphed every scene mm -hmm. so you knew exactly what was coming. So nothing was a surprise. <clears throat> exactly. And even when they didn't, it was so predictable mm -hmm. that it just wasn't good. So I want right, right, to talk about what you said earlier about the about the putting computerized Dwayne's face on yeah. Batman. That was kind of weird. It didn't look right. You get this fat face and yeah. you got like Dwayne's Perfectly face Perfectly round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Garbage Pail Kids? No, good thing I don't. I, it was terrible. Yeah, it, it looked <sighs> like something from the Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, I mean, you got this like 500 pound kid and then it's like, oh, hi, I'm Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for that kid in real life. Hey, at least nobody will know who he is, so they can't make fun of him like they did with the, with the first knows, Star Wars kid. He will, he will always know what he did. But at least he won't be made fun of like the first Star Wars kid. Yeah. That was terrible. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. Um, um, what was the bully he grew up to? What's that guy's name? Oh, Jason Bateman. Yeah, oh, he, oh. Was, he was still a dick in, in there, too. <clears throat> I, I, and that's brought up Jason Bateman. It reminds me of another point. Um, the acting in the movie, I can't really blame it all on the actors. Because Jason Bateman's a great actor. Mm -hmm. He's got that deadpan delivery. And he can just sell a line or a scene. Uh, but even his dialogue. It was just, like childish. Yeah, it was, it was very forced. Uh, it's like something, it's like I said, it's like something a high school kid would mm -hmm. write. So this is cool. I'm going to say this. Yeah. Um, so act acting wise, it wasn't all bad. The best actor or actress actually in it was Melissa McCarthy, the cross-eyed chick that he loved. At uh, the very end. Yeah, she like stared at her like this and wear glasses. She actually played her role perfectly. Well, <laughs> that, that, that's the one thing that actually surprised me. Because they kept building up this, this girl with, you know, with two lazy eyes. Yeah. Uh, really? <laughs> A big gal, mm. socially awkward, and I thought, okay, at the end, it's going to be revealed she's going to be like a supermodel. She's going to look like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> no, I thought, you know, Rock turned out like The Rock, and mm -hmm. I figured, well, his love interest is going to turn out to be like a supermodel. Mm -hmm. But no, it was Melissa McCarthy. An average looking woman. Uh, she she did, don't look ugly, she's just average looking. Uh, it's not her, it looks or not off putting. It's her tone of voice. It's always got that grating. Oh, was she, no, was she also in the uh, Ghostbusters movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, um, but this movie, she was just in there for, just for that one yeah. pointless scene. But did she do well in it? <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's I mean, did she have there yeah, well, I mean, then yeah, she did well. She, oh, speaking of that, at the end, when because he was naked in the beginning... Yep. So the rock decided, I'm going to be naked at the end. And I think that's also another excuse. Look at my abs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it was totally <laughs> that was it. I was like, and it's like nobody in the scene cared that, you know, his other wagon was hanging out. You're probably wearing a thong, to be honest well, with you. In real life, yeah, I'm sure you're wearing a thong. But the character in the movie. Like, yeah, he's naked and beautiful. He's just free balling <laughs> In a crowded in real area. life, someone would say, uh, "This man is naked at this high school reunion. Yeah. Please get the cops here." <laughs> you throw a curtain around him. Yeah, at least they gave him a jacket in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, that was a funny part. Then he's like, "I had this jacket. I never washed it down." <laughs> no, oh, uh, no. Yeah, Kevin Hart gave him the jacket to cover up his junk. Yeah. And he, he whispered thank you, and that was, made him his hero. Yeah. And at the end, he goes, oh, I want you, here's your jacket back. He says, You've had this? Oh, this yeah, I usually sleep in it. I washed it really good, so it's good to go. Which makes you wonder, what was he doing to in the jacket? 
at night when he's just sleeping in it. That he had to I wash don't it. I don't want to know because that cause he had a weird stalker fetish for this it, man. Yeah. So <sighs> that's about it. What about his wife? Uh, she, I don't even know who she is. I, she was just there. Uh, her and the the female CIA uh, leader. Mm-hmm. They, they were good actors. They just did not have enough for them to do. Uh, I honestly thought she was going to be the Badger. Yep. But I was wrong. Oh, speaking of the Badger, his co his, his partner, he plays in the movies too, and I, I just can't remember his name. And why'd you bring it up? I wanted to. You brought it up for a review to go nowhere. Because they made it You didn't think it through, did you, buddy? He kind of reminds me of the guy that was on that The Zombies and Me versus the, no, Me and the Mates versus the Zombies as that badass yeah. Australian guy. Yeah, he, he did. With the paintball going. <laughs> he did look a lot like him. Guess who he reminded me of? Um. Remember, guys, when you're in a zombie apocalypse, make sure you use paintball guns. Uh, back to this movie, <laughs> not your fantasy Nick Land movie. Um, <laughs> in the movie. I mentioned it earlier. I'm having a Joe Biden moment here. Okay, Corn Pop. Uh, I've already said that. Yeah. Uh, boop, boop. And moving on. So. So, in the end, you said just borrow it. A uh, soft borrow. A soft a, borrow was a hard borrow. Where you actually go out and, oh, can I borrow this movie? For a soft borrow, go, uh, here, take this movie home with you. What's a medium borrow? Uh, there is no medium. It's either soft or hard. He's like, let me watch that movie. Here you go. <laughs> Well, a meeting would be like, uh, see the previews and, oh, if they ever come across it, I'll borrow it. Oh. But yeah, I'm giving a self-borrow, and what about you? I have to agree, this movie wasn't really worth no. anything else. I wouldn't buy it or nothing. So, okay, I guess we said all we could really say about the movie. <laughs> Good night, everybody.